Uh, sorry, I uh, I uh, I thought somebody had a comment. Um, okay, I'll um, just continue. Um, we're in the final stretch of the application period at this time. The challenge, as you all know, is focused on shaping cities to um, uh, shaping cities for young children and their families. And um, we have uh, about 10 days to go until the last date of submissions. We're very excited to see um, some great participation from cities across the country so far. Um, till date, uh, around uh, over 50 cities are working on their applications, and we hope in the next few days to see uh, many more cities join them. Um, and this session is really designed to uh, address any questions that you may have at this time and uh, help support you to complete this process. Uh, with that in mind, it's uh, we structured it to be in two parts. The first half of the session um, uh, will be um, we're very uh, honored to um, to have the uh, Joint Secretary and Mission Director of the Smart Cities Mission, Mr. Kunal Kumar, here with us today, who will um, uh, lead the session with uh, opening remarks and also engaging in communication with three cities that have started uh, their applications and are participating in the Nurturing Neighborhoods Challenge, that is Vishakhapatnam, Chennai, and Ghaziabad. We're very pleased um, to have the CEO and uh, uh, Commissioner of the Cities here with us today. Um, and uh, um, uh, so uh, I'll just introduce uh, them also here at this time. Um, we, um, we, we are uh, thank you to Mr. Raj Cheruba, um, CEO of Chennai Smart City Limited, and Mr. Mahindra Singh Tower, Commissioner of Ghaziabad Municipal Corporation, and Mr. Vinay Kumar, Superintendent Engineer of the Vishakhapatnam Smart City Corporation, who are all here with us today. Um, so after this, from 3.30 onwards, we will have an open mic. So essentially, um, we we'll use this time to address uh, questions from cities. We encourage you from the start to uh, share any questions that you may have in the uh, questions box. Um, and we'll shortlist and try and get to as many as possible. Um, but during this time, also, um, uh, Mr. Rahul Kapoor, Director of Smart City Commission, will also address some of the frequently asked questions that we've already compiled uh, in our conversations with cities. Um, so um, please do please do share your questions as and when you think of them. Uh, and um, to close the session, um, we will hear from Ms. Uh, Rishta Madhi, uh, country representative for the Bernard Daniel Foundation. Um, so without further ado, I think um, we uh, will get started. And um, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Kunal Kumar sir, to start the session. Thank you, Nandini. Uh, am I audible? Just checking. Yes, perfectly. Okay. First of all, uh, a very happy uh, New Year uh, to everyone on the call. Uh, uh, a year that everyone, you know, thinks should be very, very different from 2020 because of the things that have happened in 2020. But I think uh, it's our actions and our the way we look at things that will matter uh, in making this year what it will become eventually. And uh, this is a great beginning in the very first week of the uh, sort of first week well uh, of the of the year we are having this uh, nurturing neighborhoods uh, discussion uh, because you know the most fascinating thing about the smart cities mission has been that it has actually got this entire gamut of things which goes into defining what a city is into uh, you know uh, into bite size capsules which you can look at very closely uh, so, for example, we are doing the streets for people. So you could look at, you know, streets, cities are about so many things. And streets is one of the very uh, important things, but it's just one of those many things that the city is about. So you can look at it in a closer way through that challenge. Then you can look at uh, cycling through a different challenge. You can look at neighborhoods through a different challenge. And you can look at so many different things because of the practice we have developed around those. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, this, in a way, uh, uh, is what you know cities are all about. We um, we have hundreds and thousands of things that we can do in cities, but eventually we've got to prioritize what is essential for the context that we are speaking about. And and so while these challenges seem to be similar for all cities, the results of these challenges, the work that will happen on these challenges, will be different in different cities because the context. Definition is different in different cities. Uh, 
you know for example when i was uh, studying in the united states you could see that people used to used to you know decide on which area to live in depending on the school that the area has so uh, how good your uh, school district is would eventually decide real estate prices and decide so many different things so that's the context of that place so eventually it pays to make your edu education system better because uh, that's how people look at you know good living now how do you define good living in a neighborhood situation in our country you know all of us have gone through the childhood and now all of us in fact i remember i used to go to school by cycle and sometimes i used to miss school and go to a playground and play and then eventually the teacher would call up my father and say you had not come to school today and then all those things but those are the things that are formative years and you learn through all those things that you do and you can only do those things if, if your city is safe enough to do all that those things um, if i had to think of sending my child to school today by cycle i would think twice despite having done that myself um so and these are facets of the city which are very very important because if you if you have a choice as a creative personality with sufficient money or maybe you know a sufficient choice that you have of selecting a city as to where you want to live in you would choose a city where you can give a good childhood to your child you have you know access to this leisure uh, you have more open spaces you have inviting neighborhoods and you feel uh, you know happier uh, in a in a place and you you will choose that and these are the people who chose cities are the people who define how cities will perform going forward because these are the people who bring the creative energy into a city and therefore which city they want to live in will actually define uh, you know which city actually succeeds so uh, all of us tend to think that you know uh, every city has a natural rate of growth of population a natural rate of growth of uh, uh, area but that is not clearly the case uh, maybe 20 years down the line some of the cities we are engaging with or we know that are nearby us may not exist and some cities who are under performers today may actually be the uh, you know the stars of 2050 and some cities which are very large today may actually diminish in size because they could not cater to this kind of population because they could not keep to the demand of giving neighborhoods and spaces which would make people happier those are times not very far away and so these challenges make us provoke us to think on those lines and to learn through these various facets like the, this one especially talks about the neighborhoods and especially in the in the context of children as to how you know are there any specific needs in my city uh, around uh, neighborhoods which can become more friendly for children are there places in my city where children find really difficult to go to school because of some reasons or are there places where there are accidents which are happening data tells me that there is a lot of accidents which are happening specifically that area has accidents of young people happening more than others or, or maybe you know are, are there places where people feel unsafe so that children don't go on, don't go out to play and uh, you know or they lack uh, playground facilities or maybe they are not able to engage properly with you know the ecosystem nearby because and all that restricts learning because ultimately if you're just indoors and you can't go outside because the neighborhood is too uninviting and dangerous it restricts your learning and it restricts your ability to develop into a good adult to be able to contribute to society so you know these are really really uh, important fundamental issues which is why this challenge is very important to the entire smart cities mission uh, maybe the word challenge is a slightly misnomer i of course there is an application and of course there is a process of getting selected and stuff like that but at the larger picture is that we want to introduce these elements in a more deeper way so that you can consume it in a way that you know uh, you can understand through it you can understand its nuances you can talk to people across the world and you can learn from each other and you can do what is required to your context so uh, do not be you know challenge challenge in the sense that you know another challenge and we want to do some something else and this is another challenge the mission is trying to help you know tell us to participate in not like that at all the mission's role is to act as a stage the play that is going to be played on the stage is you and you will decide your city will decide what plays on the stage so um, you know which area which neighborhood what priority it is for you to decide but for us it is important that we bring you uh, to understand these issues and uh, work together with you to develop a practice around these issues in the country and that is why we keep doing it and that is the spirit in which i think all cities should participate uh, when i said should participate uh, i 
I'm not again meaning that you should participate in the challenge for the sake of participating in the challenge. But you should participate because you will not get this platform anywhere else. There's no other uh, way of getting a platform as big as this and as specific as this to a particular topic uh, in the country. So uh, I think 15th January is the deadline for the cities to submit their applications. This application should not be again considered to be part of a competition. This application is to widen your horizon. You are applying to widen your horizon around neighbor neighborhoods, around understanding issues of children, understanding issues of making our spaces more inviting. So the application is for that. And who, who doesn't want to apply for these things? So who will say that I don't want to understand these things? Who will say that I don't want to learn about these things? So if you do want to, please apply. And that's the first important basic thing they could do. It's a 20 minute job of applying to do that. So uh, I will stop here maybe. Uh, uh, and uh, there is a lot to learn from the workshop. I won't really take much time. And a lot of effort has been put together by a host of people to bring this uh, for everyone. And I think uh, everyone appreciates that. Uh, so once again, uh, you know, wishing everyone um, a very happy new year, new energy, new ideas, uh, which will shape our uh, future in this year. And of course, um, exciting uh, opportunities like the Nurturing Neighborhoods Challenge should not be missed. And uh, hopefully all of you will apply by 15th of January. I'll stop here and then I'll get back into the conversation with the CEOs later. Uh, so thank you so much, Nandini. Thanks very much for those uh, encouraging words, uh, sir. Um, so um, yeah, so now moving into um, this next uh, next piece of um, our agenda today, um, I um, uh, would like to uh, invite um, all of the uh, the three um, uh, city representatives uh, who are here today to belong, um, uh, sh share your videos as well, so you can see when when you're speaking if you're comfortable with that. Um, I um, uh, we wanted to open this um, this part with a, a question about um, how asking to, to hear from each of you about how you are thinking about this challenge in the context of your city, how you are envisioning your city, um, uh, reimagining re um, what's possible in your city, um, thinking in the perspective of young children and um, their caregivers and their families. Um, and then um, we'll, uh, we'll request um, uh, the JSR to also respond um, uh, once we hear from you. So uh, maybe we can begin um, with uh, uh, Mr. Sarabha, if you know, can I? Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'm, hope, I'm audible. Yes, perfect. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you so much, and it's a fantastic opportunity. And as uh, JS pointed out, you know, uh, a lot of things uh, were possible in Chennai for sure uh, because of the Smart City Challenge. And this is not an exaggeration. I think, uh, see, typical government project is, uh, you know, you can't deviate too much from the basics. You know, you do the, your footpath, your uh, tree planting and so on. Anything that uh, sounds a bit esoteric, uh, bringing uh, women, uh, stakeholders, women safety or uh, play equipments on a footpath, etc., it's it's so jarring and bizarre that you know it's, it's, it can't be done in India. Kind of that's the first thing that comes to mind. And if you bring up Paris and London, they say, look, that's Paris and London. This is India. The reality is different. So uh, it's not easy. I'm I'm not uh, criticizing people who think like that because it's not easy because it, uh, roads are clogged with uh, cars. And a typical statement is, there's no space for cars. How can you think of all these play equipments on the road or you know? Uh, how can you give space for walking when there's hardly any space to drive? So anyway, uh, so some of these challenges have been pretty uh, interesting and obviously it's going to help most all the cities uh, you know, think about these issues. Right now, thanks to Smart City, I know this sounds like a ridiculous problem that we have in Chennai. We are, we are actually the problem is the other way around. We are actually, uh, thanks to the city's challenge, we are now taking up, I think, 28 uh, campuses of uh, corporation schools and completely revamping it, not just from physical infrastructure point of view, but from, uh, I mean, everything uh, you and I and everybody else who have been talking about all these issues, you know, looking at from a child perspective, teacher, headmistress, uh, parents, and literally children are saying, look, I want to have this kind of facility in the school. Uh, headmistress saying that, you know, these are the issues we are finding in the school and so on, and we're trying to address it. So that's a mega project we're handling. The other one, of course, is the uh, scaling of the pedestrian plaza and various uh, smart road concept to about 110 kilometers. So uh, 
I'll quickly get to the challenge we are facing with these challenges. That is, uh, uh, with limited resource, we are having to focus on these mega projects, getting through consultants, and it's, it's a ma major problem for us. But it's a good challenge to have. How do we accommodate uh, these kinds of uh, like you know um, these these challenges are resource intensive, right? Uh, it, uh, whether it's uh, nurturing neighborhoods, uh, cycle for change. Everything requires intense uh, interaction with NGOs, experts, uh, again, going and piloting on the road. Uh, so the con problem we are facing is how do we incorporate these challenges into existing projects so that we don't end up you know, spreading too thin? See, for example, Mega Street, we're already doing cycle track or at least thinking about cycle track. Obviously, Mega Street means uh, immediately the children, play equipments and so on. Uh, uh, if you have to come up with another uh, end uh, space, for example, for a separate challenge, which means there's more resources, more uh, you know uh, uh, effort from our side. So that's one thing WRA can uh, kind of help us with. If that if we make the challenge, how do you uh, complement the resources so that there are people here who are uh, looking at the existing projects? and incorporating uh, uh, nurturing neighborhood concepts into those big projects so that it doesn't become a pilot alone. It actually gets absorbed into something that can be done on the road. So that's where we are uh, right now. Um, so I leave, I'll stop at that because you know, I just want to repeat what I said earlier. Uh, I, must, I cannot say enough that you know, thanks to Smart City, there are so many not only projects happening on the ground, but all the fantasy stuff that was fantasy 10 years ago actually is getting uh, put on the ground and, and it's actually very difficult to believe that it's actually happening. But these are challenges we need to uh, quickly address so that uh, you know we don't uh, um, end up spreading too thin. So thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Um, I think maybe we'll hear from each of the cities and then cycle back. So, um, uh, maybe uh, next uh, we'll move to Gaziabad. Um, Mr. Tawasa, would you like to uh, share your uh, First of all, thank you so much, uh, Nandini, for giving this opportunity uh, to Gaziabad. And thank you, Kunal, sir, uh, for uh, giving, uh, for, for putting uh, all, the, all the things so nicely. So thank you, uh, sir. And Mr. Raj has also spoken very well uh, on, on this challenge. So when we speak about Gaziabad, I think, uh, when I think about nurturing challenge, nurturing the neighborhood challenge, I think it is about redefining the outer spaces uh, of cities, but it is not only the redefining uh, redefining outer spaces. Uh, I think there are four pillars uh, on which we have to think. Uh, first is uh, what kind of connectivity we are providing from home to that particular space uh, which we are talking about. So one issue is connectivity. Uh, connectivity includes everything. What kind of roads, what kind of walkways, what kind of cycle tracks we are having in a particular city. So uh, idea is not only to create infrastructure, but also to infuse sense of uh, using these kind of amenities in, in the citizens or the caregivers. Uh, I think that is also important because when we speak about Gajewad, we have a lot of uh, number of, uh, an, uh, a good number of uh, uh, you know, cycle track network. But point is key, are we using them? So we, we have to uh, infuse a sense that yes, we have to use and this is the future of the city. So this is one issue connectivity. Uh, second issue is uh, uh, what kind of uh, spaces we are providing to the uh, to the children of age zero to five years and the caregivers. So we have to think uh, what kind of outer spaces we are giving. So fortunately in Gaziabad, uh, we are developing 200 parks uh, in coming three months. So 200 parks and we can definitely incorporate some or uh, other things of uh, this challenge into these parks because we are in the process of developing these 200 parks so definitely we can work upon that. The thing which I am talking about is the kind of services uh, in these kind of. Uh, uh, we have to think uh, by kind of amenities, kind of services we are providing, providing uh, in these kind of open spaces. And the final thing is key awareness. As I have told earlier, uh, uh, today or tomorrow we have to infuse this sense in 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 the minds of the citizens that. If we want to give a good ambience to the to the uh, future generation, then present generation need to do something. So uh, I think uh, these are the four pillars uh, where we can think. Um, but I'm I'm uh, uh, 
you know uh, okay with the challenge and uh, i'm ready to accept this challenge thank you thank you thank you for exciting to hear um and um next we will um, request mr uh kumar from uh to share also what is happening in your city yeah uh, thank you very much first of all uh, i would like to say that our commissioner madam uh, dr Susanna madam today he, she is having a video conference with the secretary and the ministers and so she is not able to attend for this meeting but I take this as an opportunity to present about our city. Thank you, first of all, uh, to everyone, and Pranal sir also for giving uh, uh, this much of the opportunity for our uh, city. Actually, as a uh, small city, Vishakhattam, under this uh, uh, mission, uh, we did uh, uh, all sorts of projects like uh, infrastructure, school development, uh, and open space development, uh, solar, green energy. Uh, water infrastructure, uh, sewerage, and all, all sorts of projects we could take. And uh, uh, basically, uh, the open space and uh, the social infrastructure uh, which we created, especially with respect to the parks and the open spaces, uh, it uh, it gave a big impact to the uh, citizens of the city. Uh, we have developed one park, Allability Park. Uh, it's a small park, uh, but uh, uh, we could able to cater the needs of all the children, uh, especially with differently abled children with sensory play equipment uh, and other things we have created. It's a small part, but it had uh, created a lot of impact uh, uh, about the neighborhoods, what are there and all these things. Um, so especially the wheelchair also will have some slide is there, uh, their rotation is there and sensory play equipment we have provided, small hide and seek we have created, some rope walk we have created, and all. So it has given a sort of uh, uh, a confidence, and also they, they loved, it brought a lot of cheers on the uh, faces of so many children. Uh, last time, uh, our secretary have also has come, and uh, actually uh, they could also enjoy that little space. So based on this learning, uh, all the ABD area, whatever the open spaces are there, uh, we have taken this as an opportunity and around 12 to 14 parks, small, small places, but we have created some walking track, some open gym equipment we have put, uh, some sitting space we have created, some, uh, uh, we have made it a little bit brighter by bringing the light and all. So little changes, it's not much thing, but this has done a, a lot of uh, impact on the uh, essential livelihood on that. And another thing is that there is uh, one big park that is uh, 35 acres area is there, uh, which was under uh, Urban Development Authority. And under the Smart City Mission, we have taken that uh, and we are developing in uh, 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 to cater the needs of all, all ages. It's an all ages park, right from uh, uh, children of age 0 to 5 to 60, 70 year people also uh, can come and enjoy that. So this we have developed in three zones. Like uh, we have we have developed an adventurous uh, cycle track on that, and we have some skating rinks were there already. So we have created a lot of greenery in that, and um, uh, public uh, open spaces. And uh, there also we have created some adventurous zone for children, and open gym we have created. So some uh, boating, some small pool is there, some pond is there. There we have created some boating. And roughly, uh, we have created around one lakh tree saplings has also been planted. And roughly, in maybe it's going to be completed in the next two, three weeks, almost it's nearing completion. So it has also, it's, it's all learning from uh, what the little work we done from the Allability Park, uh, that uh, Voda Park, we call it as an urban development park and a smart city mission. You could able to develop that park. And it will also have a great impact on the uh, people especially uh, to uh, have that type of relaxation and also this park is uh, adjacent to the beach it's very near so from that you can also have the beach view and it's an added advantage for our city Vishakhapatnam so that is also going to be I think very uh, create a very good impact uh, uh, under the smart city mission people uh, will really appreciate uh, that uh, kind of the open space and development uh, for inclusion of the social infrastructure and all so like that, uh, the other uh, parts also, uh, the other areas also we have developed 
and this especially helped this parks and open space development paved the way by way for uh, more vibrant and uh, organized spaces uh, so they taking this as an example city we have 150 open spaces were there just we are also trying to develop them not uh, at this part but a little way we can start it and all the open spaces and also a uh, little bit uh, water bodies are also we are trying to develop because the city now has grown like anything it has having now 678 square kilometers area and with the emergence of some of the two adjacent uh, uh, local bodies also the area of the city has gone up and there are small small uh, water bodies are there we have we have to protect them because of the groundwater needs and all so that's also another learning uh, from what we have done and another smart streets project we are doing uh, under the smart streets uh, we are developing around 17 kilometers area as a smart street where uh, the sufficient uh, footpath will be provided a carriageway will be regularized and a cycle track and a green space green strips are we are creating so like that uh, all, this is a great opportunity for us to learn see implementing this also is a great challenge for us uh, when we look at it especially when we develop it as a smart road uh, there are a lot of uh, challenges has come people thinking that we are making the carriageway narrow and still there is a lot of resistance from the public that why you are narrowing it uh, usually urbanization means we have to widen the road but in the instead of in that we are trying to narrow it down there is a lot of challenge in that but we made so many stakeholder meetings we tried to convince them so we are creating footpaths we are also having one or two cycle tracks it's, it's like a model so that this can be replicated in uh, some other areas of that so in all together uh, uh, because of this uh, this open space and development it has uh, drastically increased the footfall of footfall also around 300 to 500 members uh, uh, daily they are coming and uh, trying to see our all ability park and this uh, urban development park and all these areas are all been uh, people are very much uh, they are able to enjoy the space open spaces and uh, social infrastructure what we have created there and uh, uh, the other areas are also waiting and this next comes to the sustainability it's a, again um, the uh, maintenance of this and sustainability is a, a very important factor we are trying to um, so we didn't build a robust infrastructure we have made the infrastructure a very really smaller one because if we create robust one the maintenance also will be a big issue but we are trying to make it a simple one and uh, uh, effective maintenance aspect we are uh, trying to do it and later because corporation anyhow once the mission is done then corporation has to maintain it so we are also gvmc uh, the municipal corporation is also being made part of this so that uh, the sustainability aspects also will be taken care so altogether this is a great experience for us the smart city mission and uh, it made us like uh, uh, just at the beginning i just mentioned about the green energy so floating uh, solar we made and other uh, concepts also we made uh, so and another important is under cities uh, project uh, we got some 65 crores uh, city challenge fund we got under which we are developing 40 schools we, we have already three schools we have developed under smart city mission with school infrastructure and uh, 125 schools we, we made the small uh, smart uh, classrooms we made so under cities program we are developing another uh, 40 schools 35 to 40 schools with full infrastructure social inclusion play spaces uh, kids play zone and teachers capacity building all these aspects we are trying to build it's all uh, because of the learnings what we made uh, during the last three four years so it's a great opportunity for us and uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, giving us this opportunity and thank you Thank you, thank you so much for sharing uh, your experiences. I think uh, of the, uh, of the, the, uh, the three cities have uh, highlighted uh, a number of things that are quite central to this challenge um, about um, one, looking for opportunities for convergence and finding ways to, to build in um, uh, interventions that are focused on young children and their families within existing projects. And then secondly, also having a vision, a larger vision of what um, uh, of, of where you know, the city wants to go. And, and thirdly, um, building on and scaling up our uh, from past learnings and, and past uh, uh, experiences that have um, been successes. So I would just like to kind of uh, invite now the JS if you would like to respond to some of the, mm -hmm. the, the comments um, that have been made um, or if you have any follow up questions for any of the uh, uh, 
Yes. Uh, so it's it's fantastic listening to. I mean, three of them have spoken, but obviously many other uh, people are on the ground doing fantastic work, and would eventually, you know, their work will speak for them. Uh, and and that's how we have to look at this thing. Uh, you know, uh, meaningful work would mean that all of you have to actually engage with the community more, so that you are doing things which are required, and not doing things which come to your mind and necessarily. Uh, may or may not be in sync with what the community requires. So uh, it's it's very interesting to think through, you know, maybe these three cities or somebody else can react as to how you are going about doing this reimagination. So this is all reimagination stuff. When uh, uh, Mr. Winner from uh, Vizac says that we are trying to design uh, cities which have smaller carriageways, it's a reimagination because that that was never the reimagination. If you're talking of cities with uh, a completely whole new way of looking at public education, which uh, Raj was talking about, that is a reimagination. The point is, how are we reimagining? With whom are we reimagining? What is the process of reimagining that we have inculcated? Because that is crucial to the sustainability of the initiative. If the people own it, if the community owns it, the political class owns it, then those things become really, really sustainable going forward. And, um, you know, the first one faces criticism, faces tough resistance, but once the visible results are there, everyone in the city asks, you know, I want this to happen in my area, I want this to happen in my area. So, you know, the first one is very difficult, but the next, it is difficult to stop it from replicating. That's the how things pan out. So, uh, this is probably an observation, not a question to any of you, but think of different, different ways of reimagining, of connecting with people all the while and, and not assuming things that this should be done. So maybe, you know, for example, a radio show in which caregivers are joining and uh, and uh, there is an interaction specifically with caregivers to understand their concerns. Or maybe, you know, class one children, was it six, age six or seven, uh, you could have some way of engaging with them in the school. Of course, these days schools are not on, but maybe in some other ways. Uh, also engaging with parents, there could be some kind of way of engaging with parents. Uh, and in specific communities, how do you reach out to people in this COVID time is again, again, a challenge, but then don't do anything just for the sake of doing it, do it with the community, engaging with the community and reimagining the place with the community. So that's how I would, uh, I would think that the success would multiply because you're doing so many things. Success would be eventually sustainable and meaningful if it happens for the community, by the community of the community. So maybe I'll stop here. I think it's more a comment than a question. Um, and you can carry on. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I um, think we um, will be moving into the uh, the, the open mic um, uh, segment uh, next. Um, but uh, before we do that, I just wanted to um, give uh, one more opportunity to um, you know, to, to share. Um, any um, any other examples of um, ways that they are uh, that that you are um, trying to draw on um, your past experience to in, in this specific challenge um, and um, and uh, focusing on how um, how those um, uh, those projects are uh, incorporating uh, components that are specific to young children and their families. Um, if you have any uh, any additional thoughts to share. Um, we we'll just take a few minutes here, and in the meanwhile, um, I just uh, would like to uh, again remind um, the audience that um, you can uh, submit your questions here because we will uh, next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank With that then, I suppose we will um, we will move into the Q and A session now. I know um, that um, some uh, not not everyone is able to see the full uh, length of uh, the session as well. So um, thank you all for for sharing your thoughts here. Um, and um, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Uh, Rahul Kapoor, uh, the director, to um, join us as well here to respond to some of 
um, the more frequently asked questions. I believe some of these questions are things that um, each of the three cities now has have also raised. Um, and um, I will uh, um, ask uh, my colleague, uh, Sri Kumar, to, um, to share these questions um, here. Uh, meanwhile, I will be uh, checking the question box uh, for additional questions. Sri, over to you. Yeah. Thanks, Nandini. Um, thanks for the great uh, session so far. And uh, we've been uh, in, while interacting with the cities, we've been hearing about uh, you know a number of questions on uh, how uh, how we could really uh, efficiently uh, identify projects which will address these kind of. Um, focusing on young children and uh, towards nurturing neighborhoods so uh, specifically looking at how to think rethink as 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 uh, uh, js uh, also mentioned about how it's an opportunity to rethink our cities and uh, while doing that how do we do uh, that in the in the light of existing projects we have already have projects uh, existing projects and uh, we are doing this challenge right now. So uh, how do we do that? How do we incorporate the, the, the young children oriented approach in the projects? You know, whether what stage of the project should be? Uh, what, 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 is the, what is the ideal stage where we could incorporate these kind of uh, ideas? So we would like to uh, ask uh, Mr. Rahul Kapoor on, uh, on your thoughts on how uh, the, this kind of lens of young children oriented approach can be applied in what stage of uh, projects which are already uh, there? Uh, thank you, Sri. I think a very interesting discussion. And it's been quite some time now uh, since we met. Been, uh, there was a holiday. So first of all, a very happy new year to everyone listening uh, in this webinar. Now, with regard to the kind of projects that can be taken up under the pilot. So of course, a project that has already been completed cannot be considered that's a straight no for example the project that vishakhapatnam has already done he can definitely learn from such projects but as as a part of this challenge these projects will not qualify so ideally the project should be either in the project preparation stage wherein you are in the process of finalizing your detailed project reports and you can incorporate all the nnc features into that uh, particular uh, project or something which you have uh, tendered out and wherein there is existing scope to modify the project uh, to include or incorporate the NNC components. So anything which has been planned, which is under preparation, which is uh, something that the city would like to take forward as part of its uh, development plan and which is in alignment with the various components that the challenge talks about, the five components, then definitely those projects uh, can be taken forward. Uh, further, Shri, if, uh, for, uh, of course, there is a bit of ambiguity with regard to smart cities. And uh, since this challenge is open to cities other than smart cities as well, and uh, the smart it's, cities... That's really happen. great. Uh, yeah. Now, another thing has been one of the main questions uh, which we... Okay. Uh, please go ahead, Shri. I think there's some lag or something. Uh, Shri, can you please repeat? I think uh, there's some lag or something. I'm not able to hear you. Yes, I think uh, there might be a lag. Um, I can I can share the, the one of the next questions um, that um, that has been asked, which um, uh, essentially about um, how uh, cities can use smart city chains um, existing things for new projects proposed and you know, thinking at this time. Yes, so in fact, I was thinking of addressing that issue. In fact, this is something that has been uh, discussed both formally and informally. And taking up projects beyond the ABD area, with regard to all the challenges that we have undertaken so far, uh, be it the Streets for People challenge, be it the Cycles for Change challenge, and be it the Nursing Neighborhood challenge, we have kept it fairly open. The whole uh, philosophy behind this is that since it is open to all cities, 
not nearly smart not only smart cities so there has to be a level field for all the concerned cities uh, so that they can compete together in a fair manner that is why for the purpose of these challenges we have kept the arena fairly open smart cities can also take up projects outside the abd area if required however what our advice has been and which is also part of the challenge guideline is that try and keep your projects within a particular neighborhood try and see synergies with the other projects that are being undertaken in that area with other missions and normally the advantage you will have by taking up the projects within the abd area would be for other complementary projects that you have undertaken under the mission and which are in your control will be better synergized with this particular project so of course there is no restriction to take it outside the abd area but we would definitely advise that try and stay focused in an area which is under your control and which can complement the other supporting projects that are being implemented there in that city yes another question has been uh, on how cities can uh, use funding uh, which is available under uh, various programs and uh, and how to really efficiently uh, use that to get these projects done on the on ground so with regard to the scope of funding we have actually allowed all kind of flexibility within the mission and even outside i mean those cities which are not smart cities can look at some other mission project funds for example under amrit wherein you have a significant component of development of uh, public spaces and parks so those kind of projects can also be undertaken or uh, if it's uh, a metro company and if a metro company is taking up a area development exercise then they can or definitely incorporate the nnc conference in those projects as well so when you're looking at scope of funding it is fairly flexible you can either use the smart cities mission funds if you're a smart city or you can use any other source of fund either through convergence or through your internal resources maybe it can be done under a public private partnership maybe as part of a csr activity wherein certain projects can include certain nnc components and those particular components can partially be funded as part of a csr effort so the avenues are many the whole idea is to get more innovative and i'm sure that innovation is also part of the overall evaluation in this program and that is what we are looking at so funding should never be a problem in this program and in this challenge and please uh, feel free to explore all avenues of finance great so you you really spoke about this how this efficiently using the existing funds uh, to the idea of getting convergence and uh, and how that can be a great uh, great uh, source and now talking a little bit for more about convergence uh, there is also these um, uh, you know the uh, in the current situation there is this covid response related projects the mission has has uh, directed cities to look at and also there are the other challenges like uh, challenges around the cycle and streets so all of these are happening cities are doing all of these things at the same time so how, how do you think uh, there can be convergence how how they can uh, come together you know if you ideas uh, definitely shri i think we would want as many projects to get implemented in cities which addresses to the varied or uh, requirements of the different user groups be it cyclists be it the people be it the children and their caregivers so ideally we would like more projects we would like more distinct projects but then again we also encourage convergence so there is no restriction as such that if you have decided to undertake a project under the streets for people challenge or the cycles for change challenge and if that is a project wherein you would want to include nnc uh, components also then please go ahead and do that however we would still request so that the citizens get the maximum benefit try and identify unique projects try and identify new projects and projects that can be distinguished as an nnc pilot so that later on there is no ambiguity that the same project is uh, uh, being uh, placed in the various categories of course there is no restriction and sometimes that is also considered as an asset but then i think it i would leave it up to cities but from my personal viewpoint i would say implement a distinct unique project so that the citizens get more benefits that's great think about unique projects um, 
Now, another thing is that uh, to create these unique projects, many times there's a lot of stakeholders are also involved and, uh, and how efficiently, you know, of implementation actually depends on how the partnerships are, are made. And, uh, and how do you uh, recommend uh, cities to look at partnerships with either other government agencies or NGOs and citizen groups? How do you look at that? So I think it's a very, very important part of any planning and implementation process, you know, because many a times in the government, we actually fall into the trap wherein uh, we tend to feel that whatever we do, we know and we know best. And unless there's a feedback loop, there's a mechanism wherein we are open to suggestions, we are open to ideas, even if we know, even if we think that we understand certain things, but it is always uh, prudent to actually keep your channels open and that is where these partnerships help. So you'll be surprised through this, uh, through these webinars, there have been requests. And in fact, I have, uh, people have responded with me also seeking to partner with some of our cities, you know, and uh, try to advise them on uh, what needs to be done right or what needs to be corrected. And uh, such situations are always welcome. So try and look at partnerships with the various NGOs, the civil society bodies, the various experts, be it university, uh, universities in your area or colleges in your area. There may be people who have been working on uh, projects uh, with regard to nursing neighborhoods or with regard to bringing in child friendly elements or with regard to the caregivers or the different uh, user groups, uh, be it for all abilities or be it for things that have convergence with this particular challenge. So establishing partnerships is a very important component. Please do not overlook it. I think that is also a significant part of your evaluation process wherein we try to look at how many partnerships you are trying to build and forge. So take all stakeholders together with you so that there will not be any questions asked tomorrow. As a government authority, we are always open to scrutiny. The defense that we have is as long as you have indulged in citizen engagement, as long as you have indulged with all concerned stakeholders, then I'm sure uh, the, the, the chances of the success of your project would be very, very high. Great. Those are really uh, useful for the cities to uh, really understand how this can be taken ahead. Thanks a lot for that. We also have a lot of questions uh, um, coming on the chat box. Uh, I'll just read out uh, the first one. Uh, what role geographic information systems play in nurturing and furthering the tenets of Smart Cities mission? Um, okay. So, of course, uh, this has now become a very important component of our overall mission monitoring and implementation. We are just about to release our first version of the GIS based uh, management information system, wherein we will actually be geo tagging all the 5000 plus projects that are currently under implementation in cities. So that is one part with regard to your monitoring of projects with regard to understanding how things are progressing on ground. But more than that, it is also about planning. So not only in the smart cities mission, but the overall approach of Mahua has been to use GIS as a tool to basically achieve those outcomes or goals that we are setting out for ourselves to achieve. So starting with your uh, GIS based master planning of uh, cities, that is a project under the Amrit mission or the various data analytics and tools that we are trying to use in our, uh, as part of a data strategy in the mission. So definitely a very important component and I'm sure some of the other panelists sitting in the group can validate the same uh, and uh, just elaborate on some of the things that we have done. That's really great. Uh, I mean, the data is a very important part of this challenge. And here as well, we also look forward for uh, collecting uh, through this challenge, collecting data from the cities and, and develop a great um, uh, repository of, of looking at understanding young children, how they are living in our cities. So uh, just going forward, uh, another interesting question uh, on can we develop park as food parks where children can learn and grow food uh, through nature, you know, through nature, how to grow food? <laughs> A very interesting suggestion. In fact, you know, we are also thinking about food and thinking by food, I don't just mean like thinking about food, but the uh, mission is actually conceptualizing uh, something called the eat smart challenge now this eat smart challenge is 
basically setting out to create a food ecosystem in our smart cities, wherein we try to incul inculcate uh, safe uh, food habits with regard to hygiene, with regard to checking on adulteration, with regard to having uh, spots uh, which uh, are uh, something like a food park, when, which you're talking about. So those are the kind of innovation uh, innovations or interventions that we are thinking of as part of this particular challenge. So probably uh, by the end of this month or probably the third week, uh, those who are following this should be on the lookout for the Eat Smart Cities Challenge. Great. Um, another question is on um, the, you know, how our cities are, have a huge proportion of informal sector, which is especially the, the poorer sections living in slums. How does this challenge can really have a vision for them, and uh, and especially the uh, also the street vendors? Uh, usually, development means actually these these sections really get marginalized. And uh, how do you think we can uh, incorporate uh, in the in the solutions and uh, really as an inclusive uh, solution going forward? So, uh, if you look at it, actually, the whole smart cities mission and the projects that are being undertaken are actually trying to target interventions on three core areas. One is improvement of quality of life. Second is improving the economic ability or the economic capacity of the cities. And third is the sustainability factor. So, when you are conceptualizing projects, they are actually trying to address one of these three core issues or challenges within the mission. Any project that you take, we are actually trying to categorize all the projects within these three components and what kind of impact they are going to bring about. Yes, the issue of uh, informal sector issues that uh, came up during the COVID crisis, especially during the lockdown period, have been uh, pressing and the cities have tried to respond to that with regard to technology interventions, with regard to non-technology interventions. There have been a lot of documentation that has taken place and these are things that we need to improve in our city planning, how to make it more inclusive. and. That is why when you're talking about these challenges and when you're trying to identify neighborhoods, try and identify those neighborhoods which actually cater to a large majority of population which is residing in these areas, which are categorized as slums, so that they also have inclusiveness, uh, access to such kind of facilities and features. And slowly and slowly, these developmental interventions also improve the overall quality of life and the economic ability of that region. So identification of neighborhoods that create the maximum impact would be very important. I mean, if you already have a beautiful neighborhood in a very posh location in a place like Delhi and creating another intervention there, maybe it might not be as impactful as creating an impactful project in an area which is uh, already deprived. So use that as a cue to make it more inclusive, to create maximum impact when you are selecting your neighborhood as part of this intervention. Great, really inclusive solutions uh, by identifying where we intervene and how we intervene. Now, uh, another question also is coming up is on about utilities, especially things like rainwater harvesting and, uh, you know, these kind of activities, uh, this kind of projects. How do, you know, how to have, uh, do they have a connection with how to connect with connecting with this kind of nurturing neighborhoods idea and uh, how, uh, you know, connecting with young children, I think uh, that's also an interesting connect. I think, I think that's what innovation is all about. Somebody will have to think really innovatively and connect these two dots. And if they are able to do that, I'm sure they will create a very unique solution that will address multiple issues with the same project, you know, and uh, maybe it's an area where I uh, have not probably imagined a solution, but probably that's where out of box thinking is required. And many of our cities must be trying to do that. So this is a food for thought for them to see how they can actually connect the two dots. Absolutely, connecting the dots innovatively. Uh, now, I think we have uh, uh, just a, probably one more question. Uh, there is one on how to get RWAs, the Resident Welfare Associations, can uh, take part and how you know they can be the kind of uh, drivers of change uh, by taking part in the challenge. I think we've also got a suggestion in the chat, uh, which is fairly useful. I mean, definitely creating an incentive model to encourage RWAs to participate, 
to improve uh, their own neighborhood and localities. So that uh, comes to towards this challenge uh, towards the submissions. So that is something that can be done. So looking at it, bottoms of thinking is something which is required here. Sitting here, yes, we can guide, we can handhold, we can give you that direction. But many of the suggestions or solutions will be very context specific, very localized. And that is why the whole idea of creating local partnerships, connecting with your set of experts and people who are interested, who are stakeholders, who get affected by these projects, they will be the ones who will solve your problems. And that's where getting your RW is because they are part of the problem and also part of the solution. Many a times we also feel the situation wherein you do parking issues within a colony. Many of the parks get converted to parking lots. And how do you reclaim that? So getting them involved, incentivizing them, trying to make them understand the importance of these kind of challenges is very important. So create the right incentive models and probably these, this is how you'll create lighthouses for other cities to replicate. Thanks a lot, Mr. Kapoor. We really uh, had a rapid fire of questions and <laughs> there were a number of questions more both in the chat as well. Uh, thanks a lot for your time uh, answering them patiently. Uh, we learned a lot um, and uh, hope this was very useful for the cities to think about the challenge and uh, to apply. And uh, we, uh, we really, once again, we really uh, uh, welcome uh, the cities to apply in the remaining time. And thanks for ministry for uh, for providing the, all the support and for Bernard Van Leer Foundation uh, to be supporting this uh, program. And uh, now over to um, we. I think we we can do the closing remarks. Uh, Nandini, is there anything else? Like that? Uh, yes. No. We'd like to invite um, uh, Rishi Samiti, the India representative for the Bernard Van Leer Foundation, to um, share closing remarks with us. Thank you very much, uh, Nandini and Shri, um, and a happy new year to everyone from the Bernard Van Leer Foundation as well. Uh, um, I would like to, first of all, thank uh, again the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and the Smart Cities Mission and to everybody who participated, uh, to the Joint Secretary, Mr. Kunal Kumar, Rahul Kapoor, um, and the DAMU and the WRI team, and to all the cities and agencies that joined today's session uh, that presented, asked questions, and are interested in applying. Um, and just to reiterate uh, what we've been saying throughout, uh, is that the challenge can be a very exciting journey, uh, one that will give cities a new lens from the height of 95 centimeters, as we like to uh, say, which is the height of a healthy three-year-old child, um, and looking at the earliest years, looking at, uh, in particular, uh, the zero to five years, and looking at um, families of young children. Um, the formative year, if you will, as the Joint Secretary mentioned, and to think through in innovative ways what can cities uh, do about it. And heard excellent examples. Uh, we have excellent examples under uh, um, and how nurturing neighborhoods are being built uh, across the world. And in India itself, we have uh, three champion cities uh, at the moment, Pune, Udaipur, and Bhubaneswar, that are already applying these principles uh, in how they design and manage cities. And of course, we hope that many more cities will join this movement. Um, and looking at uh, all the applications that uh, will come in as the first round and selecting a cohort of cities. Uh, so we encourage all of you to apply and think about how your cities can become friendlier towards young children and their families. Um, and of course, uh, to say that uh, this will help your cities not only improve the quality of life for uh, young children and their families only, but for all uh, citizens because cities that work for babies and young children, of course, tend to work for all. That is what we um, at the Bernard Van Leer Foundation believe, and that's what we've seen in cities that have taken up uh, uh, many of these principles. So with that, I thank all of you again and uh, look forward to the applications and next steps under the challenge. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much, um, Arusha. I've uh, just posted the challenge website um, into the chat box for um, for everyone's reference. Um, you can also go to the contact section on there to reach the help desk um, for this challenge. So you can reach us on email or, um, or by phone 
um, please do reach out in case you require any support um, as we move forward in preparing applications. Um, as uh, others have mentioned, um, we're in the final stretch now and we look forward to connecting with you and, and helping to support you um, in the uh, in, uh, yeah. um, So thank you again to everybody and um, with that, we will 